Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. This is part three of the Ingle Neck Spin. So in the first part, we did the first part <laughs> and the second part, we spun the second part. And now in the third part, we're gonna go ahead and ply it together and discuss how that went. But the actual footage of the plying is pretty sparse because not only was it mostly dark when I plied because life has been crazy as I had noted in previous videos. Also, I think plying is not that interesting to watch because it's hard to get a really good view of the colors at such a far off distance. So plying is usually my least favorite visually speaking. So to make up for that, I'm gonna do a quick little knitting update. So we will do that before we jump into the video. So I pulled out this UFO. It is a Rocky Leggings by Tin Can Knits that I start, wah, that I started, um, I think three years ago. <laughs> No, it can't be that long because beans three, like two years ago when we were first moving to Kansas and I got this far, right? The reason I got this far is because right here is where my knitting technique changed to not be twisted and there's a huge difference and then I was like, I am not unpulling this. It's going to be ridiculous, but now I just can't get over the dramatic difference. It's like two different gauges, two different sizes. There's this weird tight spot on her thigh. And anybody who's ever worn, worn, anybody who's ever worn them dark tights knows about that stupid freaking seam on your thighs that always causes trouble. I'm not about that life. So I got to frog it and I'm using knit picks, the wood interchangeable tips. And then also this, I think it's Algeron, Algeron which is an alpaca yarn from Knit Picks as well. But I love the yarn, I love the pattern, I love everything about it except for the fact that I switched to twisted, or not twisted in the middle. So I'm gonna frog that. And then using this yarn, I will link the spin video for this thing. Um, this is the second skein of a two skein project. Um, I'm knitting the Beloved Bonnet by Tin Can Knits, and I've not knit one of those before. I did a video on it. Um, so I'm knitting a second one in purple as well, because Bean's favorite color is purple for this upcoming winter. So that's what I'm doing with this and the actual projects in the car. And I'm going to be making a video on that anyway, so you don't have to worry. And then I'm this far into the second mitten from my Tour de Fleece spin. So that's, that's so far. <laughs> so there you go. That's my quick little knitting update. Now let's jump into the plying and then I'll meet you on the other side and show you the results and talk about how it went. So I wanted to show you some of the cool features uh, of the Spinolution Queen Bee that I use and some tips and tricks. These Lazy Kate things are removable. And then as you can see on the bottom of these bobbins, they have a little white plastic part. Um, you wanna put that down first. You can spin with the magnety part down, but it's a lot less smooth and kind of squeaky. And if you don't have the plastic pieces, they might have fallen out. Um, that happened to me and I couldn't figure out why in the world it was such a drag, like literal drag, hard to pull <laughs> to ply drag and then I realized it was the plastic pieces. So any of your dealers can get those for you. Most dealers don't have them listed in the shop just because they're not too popular of a purchase, you know? <laughs> but any of us, including me, if you send us a message, um, we can get it for you. So anyhow, um, another trick I found is if you put the bobbins at the bottom two tiers, you're less likely to get it hit in your flyer. Um, I don't know if it's just me or what, but if I put it as a top two, sometimes it gets tangled in the flyer. Not all of the time, not even most of the time, but enough of the time that I'm like, whoa, I gotta make sure I don't do that on accident. Because <laughs> it really goes. Once it hits and catches those little pegs, boy, it goes around fast. Um, 
Anyhow, so the spin was pretty straightforward. It was a two ply. I used the Lazy Kate. Um, I will say, um, like I said in the talking head portion of this, that the rate of, like the weighing ratio was different than I anticipated. I should have been a little bit more careful with the color to color because as we plied, things didn't line up exactly how I wanted it to, and it got a bit more burber pulley than was my goal. And like I said in the intro, initially I was really bummed about that, but I think it worked out well in the end. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as the ply goes, it was pretty straightforward the way I usually do it, and um, you can see that, as per usual, I enjoy playing with different plying techniques. I'll do several different methods in one spin. I also, if you can tell, was enjoying playing with different camera angles. I had my husband do some interesting camera work, and I think it looks pretty great. What do you think? If you enjoy the camera angles, um, comment down below. Um, also, I'm always open to inspiration for people that have a really either visually beautiful style or some of the ways that they present information. Uh, yeah, recommend that to me down below. My favorites are royalty soaps and the Bon Appetit people are fun. And I am a little obsessed with art journal making videos. So those are kind of random. <laughs> I like Peaceful Cuisine. They're a cooking, like a zen cooking thing. I think it's supposed to be ASMR, but I don't I don't know much about ASMR. But anyway, <laughs> that's your ramble of the day. So um, let's meet back in the talking portion and we'll wrap this sucker up. This is the first skein off the wheel and I will have some close up photos and stuff so you can really see. But I think it went so good. So far, this far in, right? The purples are falling with the purples and the blues are falling with the blues just as I had imagined. <laughs> then we get this game number two, right? So I had pulled out a little bit of extra fiber to even out the the top versus the bat so they were roughly the same weight. Well. Something went pear-shaped in there. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure it was because I said sure a lot. I'm sure it's because I spun some different weights with the bat versus the top because the top had flax through it um, and then the bats were pretty smooth. So I'm guessing that's kind of what went down. But here you can see at the beginning things are falling as they should. It's looking kind of semi-solid, but then <laughs> Then we get into barber pole category. And I was like, oh no, what is happening? The feeling, the entire vibe is two totally different things. What have I done? This is my ankle neck spin and I have done this thing. But as I was spinning, I was like, okay, I actually like this. I mean, it's more my regular style, but I was trying to be sophisticated and ingle nooky, right? Like there is an ingle nook vibe that I was sort of trying to go for. Yeah, well, my inner graceness can't be suppressed, it turns out. <laughs> and then by the third skein, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely liking this. It is, it's kind of semi-solid. I mean, it's all in the same color family, right? It's, it's a thing, it's nice, I like it. Well, and then here's the extra piece. This much fiber was the one that caused all the problems. Uh, so this is the little bit of the bat that I just pulled off and spun center pole ball. Um, and it's beautiful. Kind of more what I was going for. <laughs> but, oh well, right. So either way, um, despite my little plying fiasco there. I think it went so good. It really is my style. It's not necessarily the classic Inglenook vibe. Um, people who spin Inglenook tend to have a very specific aesthetic. Inglenook has a dedicated follower 
core group and they have a very consistent style and aesthetic, right? A lot of spindle spinners, a lot of very technical stuff, a lot of not variegation. <laughs> so um, I was kind of trying to mimic that, but as I was working through the play after my initial freak out, I was thinking, you know, a lot of people have this idea of how you're supposed to approach the more famous brands. Um, Nest is another one, Nest Fiberts. They have a super specific aesthetic among their core followers, super specific. There's almost like one acceptable way to spin certain makers stuff and if you don't it just feels real weird and crazy <laughs> and i got that vibe with the ingle nook and i hadn't even really processed that out and made that into a formulated thought until i saw what had gone wrong and thought this is my ingle nook i do not spin it in the ingle nookish way so yeah let this be a lesson to you that um a, your inherent Eunice really is not going to want to go away even if you try and plan it away. <laughs> Don't fight it, just embrace it. Two, check to see if the way that you think a maker should be spun is the way that you really think it should be spun. Or, oh, I finally got that tiny piece of fluff. This is like my fourth video of the day and I get was a piece of silk stuck to my necklace. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so check to see if that's how you really think it should be spun or if it's more of like a subconscious peer pressure. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I had something else interesting I was gonna say about this and I don't remember what I was gonna say. So my plans for this yarn is either a jacket or um, my winter set. Um, I keep trying to decide which which yarn I want to make my winter set, my hat and my mittens with. And I kind of think this would be beautiful with a black background yarn to try my hand at some color work. Um, my next big project that I didn't mention because it'll be in a video, so therefore it's sneaky, um, does involve some cabling, which will be my first. Um, so I want to try maybe some color work. I don't know. I can't decide if I want it to be a jacket or color worky with black. Um, but yeah, if you have an opinion, leave a comment down below. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this spin. I hope that you saw Ingle Nook in a unique and new light. And I can't wait to try more of their fiber, even though it is a pain in the bum to snag some, <laughs> holy moly. They actually have an update tomorrow as I'm filming this and I'm gonna try and get, it's the natural dye collection. I'm gonna see if I can snag some of that. Probably not, honestly, because I'm not gonna like set an alarm. Maybe I should, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> But anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this spin and I hope that it gave you confidence to approach some of the more holy grail type fibers and makers with more confidence. Confidence? Confidence? Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to stick around for these shenanigans, hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support the show or listen to the voiceovers, this one doesn't have a voiceover because the demo part was so short. But most of my videos do have voiceovers. The voiceovers and the whole archive of voiceover videos of the past are available to Patreon patrons. So check that out down below as low as a dollar a month, which is super cheap, like two coffees a year, right? Less than two if you get the giant ones. <laughs> so yeah. And then um, if you didn't know, I deal Spinolution spinning wheels. So if you've been looking for a wheel or have questions about Spinolution, you can follow the links down below to that. And those funds help buy my groceries this month and also pay for rent and other cool things like that in addition to helping me actually run the show. <laughs> so I really appreciate each and every aspect of your support. And yeah, I'll see you next time.